In this video, I want to talk about the unjust steward. That's a parable given by Christ. And in that parable, there is one important thing that many don't see. And I don't blame you if you don't see something. But if that's something that you don't see is life changing, then I need to address it. I've addressed it before, but I'm going to do it one more time for you. And to do that, I'm going to extend the parable a bit. Okay, it goes like this. And I'm going to give an historic background also so you can understand the parable because remember, Christ lived under Roman rule. Okay, so his parables were designed primarily for people at the time who were listening to him. And he was physically there in Judea. So, you need to understand the historical background of the era in which Christ lived to get a full understanding of the parable. Now, it goes like this. Yet yeah, this Felix, I just mentioned a, a, a thing of the name of Felix. He was from Italy. He used to be a Roman soldier for a time. And he now had his own business in Judea. Because... The east of the Mediterranean was the most, well, it was actually the busiest economically place in the world. Why? Of course, there was a lot of trade between the Roman provinces over there, but there was also car there were also cargo from India and China, and what they call Southeast Asia that arrived in Egypt and through the Faro channels they, they were transported into the Mediterranean and from there they went on to Italy. You also had through the Silk Road on land cargo and also diplomatic documents, sometimes even travelers that arrived in the East of Mediterranean and then transferred on the ships towards Rome or towards Greece. So the east of the Mediterranean was economically active. Okay? So for you to start from business, it would be wise to do it over there. Now, this Felix had a manager that managed his finances. It often happens. Especially if you're often away from home. And remember, traveling during the Roman Empire, especially by land, was quite slow. By sea, it was much quicker, but still, many of the important places were not located at sea. They were located at rivers or near mountain ranges, sometimes also. Think about military camps. So, you had to travel by land, and you had no railways, you had no buses, no, you only had chariots and horses, or you went by foot. So, that being the case, Felix was often away from home. So his manager in Judea had to manage his affairs, his financial affairs in Judea. Felix one day heard rumors that his Judean manager was wasting his finances. That he was spending it on things that were not related to his business. So this Judean manager was really stealing money from him. Now, Felix had no evidence this was the case. Because these were just rumors. No evidence was, uh, was presented that proved, without a reasonable doubt, that this Judean manager was wasting his finances. And Felix could have initiated a criminal investigation, or he could just where, go through the data himself, through the documents, and he could have figured out whether or not finances were wasted. But here's the thing. Even without criminal investigation and without proof, there was no sign whatsoever that finances were wasted. So it was just a rumor to put that manager in a negative daylight. But look at this. In the business world, even back then, your reputation is quite important. So if there are rumors out there that your business is not reliable because finances are wasted, 
sooner or later you're finished. So Felix told his manager, um, let's call the manager Jacob, his Hebrew name Jacob. I'm hearing you're wasting my finances. What's, what's up with that? And Jacob tells him, sir, wasting your finances? What are you talking about? Ever since I got this job, I did my job properly. You can ask my employ your fellow employees, or you can ask the slaves. And then Felix told him, doesn't matter. I can't have a manager working for me the suspect of wasting my finances. So within within a few within a month or two you're gone. I don't want to see you here anymore. I want you to to uh, finish the case you're you you you're involved with and then you pack your bags and you leave. You got it? So the Judean um, manager, I would say Jacob, was thinking, what the heck is this? Why does this have to happen to me? I mean, he was in a shock, but then he realized, hold on a minute. I'm about to lose my job. I'm about to have no income. That means I'm about to lose my house, because I can't pay the rent anymore. I'll end up in the streets that I need to beg. And if you end up as a beggar, nobody looks at you anymore. I don't want this to have that to happen to me. But I also have nobody else to assist me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my influence that I have now as a manager of this business to extend my social network so that when Felix kicks me out, I can continue. Now, it went like this. Felix went through the cases and there were many people that were in debt to his employer. So Felix approached each of those people, he called them to his office and he told them, you know what, you owe Felix that, that amount of money or it can be accounted for in goods. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reduce the debt because all debt in the Roman Empire has to be documented because anyone can just say you owe them something. So according to Roman law, you need to document all debts. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change the documents. You owe him 100 faces of oil. I'm going to say you owe him only 50 faces of oil. So half of your debt is gone. And then the debtor who's shocked then says, Okay, um, Jacob, what can I do for you? Because you'll get in trouble for this. And Jacob says, Don't worry about it. Then the debt says, No, 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 no. You have me out like this. I'm going to help you out also. So the debtor pays him a large sum of cash and he does this with all the, the, the debtors of his employer. So after about a month, Felix earned a lot of money. Not only did he earned a lot of money, he extended himself socially. He now knew more people and those people are talking about him also. So now, if he would lose his job, he has a bit of capital, he can start either his own business or he can live off the money for a while. But he can act as an entrepreneur and he has a social network for his business so he can move on and can continue. Hey, he became economically relevant. So Felix returned from Egypt. And when Felix returned from Egypt, some of the slaves informed them this Jacob messed around with the administration. Felix asked oh, what was going on now. They told him, Sir, this Jacob cancelled out most of the debts of the people that owed you. And Felix was upset. He, he informed about it and found out it's true. And Felix thought, you know what? I'm going to sue this guy. He's going to hang. He's going to jail. I don't take this. But then his wife told them, there, be careful what you do. And, and he, Felix told his wife, there, what's going on with you? Don't you see this guy has frauded us? I told him about, I was about to fire him. Look what he did to us. 
the wife told him there. Look at the bigger picture, examine the situation carefully. So Felix thought about it for a few days and realized that he was wrong. He did not conduct an investigation to figure out whether or not Jacob was wasting his finances. He just agreed with accusations without regarding Jacob's well-being at all. So he realized he was wrong. That's the first thing. Second thing is, he put Jacob in a position that he had no, hadn't had many options anymore. And you never put an individual in such a position because people in such a position are often triggered to do desperate things. So Jacob so Felix realized he's kind of contributed to the situation himself. Actually, he did contribute to the situation himself. He should have never given in to the accusations of others. He should have stood up for his uh, lawyer employee. He didn't. He was about to fire him, despite he was a faithful employee all those years. And thirdly, and the third thing that Felix realized is this Jacob is quite smart. By causing all the deaths many people, all those people gave him some money as a thank you. So this, so this Jacob now has money. A month ago he was just an employee. He needed the, his wage that I would pay him. Without that wage, he wouldn't have anything else. Now, he, do, he doesn't need this job anymore. He can walk out anytime he wants. And not only that, he has people that back him up. So if I decide I want to prosecute him or, uh, and I go after him, he now has multitudes of people that will defend him. So if I go after him now, I will have multitudes of people against me and against my business. And then I need to combat all of those. A month ago, he didn't knew that many people. So I would have, would have gotten rid of him then, it, it, it would be dead. But now I can't just get rid of him because I'll be in big trouble. And Felix realized this Jacob is quite smart. He did not tolerate the situation. He did not agree with my decision, which was wrong. He did not just be, give in to the, to the circumstances. He looked at the bigger picture and he acted in his own long-term interest and he also considered long-term interests of others now i extend the parable a bit and i gave i've given you some historic background of how economics and politics were back then when christ walked the earth in this parable i extend it a bit the short version of christ you read it in the new testament yourself in this parable it's obvious that this manager, I call him Jacob, just to make it easier. It's obvious that Jacob, before this crisis, did not look at the bigger picture. Before the crisis, he only had a job. So if anything would happen to that job, he would be finished. He didn't realize it then. He thought he was secured. He thought he settled. His, his life was going well. It's when the Christ appeared that he was the victim of a smear, smear campaign. And the smear campaign was now about to cost him his uh, living, maybe even his life, because if you added up homeless during that time, you could lose your life easily. He then realized, hold a minute, I can't continue like this. And he realized I need to become economically relevant in this community so that I won't be dependent on a job anymore. I can still have a job and I'm not dependent on it. And isn't that the position a lot of people are in today? Jacob before the crisis. They don't look at the bigger picture. They think I'm doing my job mechanically. I have friends and family that support me so everything is fine. It can never happen to me that I'll be the victim of smear campaign and I can lose my job or lose my home outside of my own fault. They have this arrogant, proud attitude that they got, got it all together. And this, it is this proud and arrogant attitude that blinds them from looking at the bigger picture, from seeing how vulnerable they are. You know what? It, it amazes me often how worldly people respond surprised when a sudden crisis appears. While if you would have evaluated the situation carefully, you would realize how could you not see it coming? About a decade ago, was it a decade ago already? Yeah, it, a bit more than a decade ago, I think. There was this bank in the Netherlands. 
It was a very successful bank. But the reason the bank was successful was because there was a lot of criminal activity going on. There was a lot of um, money laundering going on with that bank. Nevertheless, a lot of people trust that bank. They put their savings on that bank, their pension they put on the bank. Man, they thought to me, this bank is secure. And one day, the bank went bankrupt. A lot of people began to withdraw their money, and that escalated the collapse of the bank. There were people that lost all the money they saved over two decades. There were people that worked two decades, saved a lot of money in the thousands of euros, and they lost all of it. Just like that. They only got around a few hundred euros as compensation from the bank that the, the money was gone. There were other people that earned money through business, they lost it also. And when you look at it carefully, you begin to think, hold on a minute. You have some cash, you put it on a bank, and that's secure, because in today's world, things go through online banking and all of that, so there's nothing wrong with that. But you're only dependent on that bank. Why not have multiple accounts here and there, and on each account you put a small amount? In that case, something goes wrong with this bank, you left the other amounts over there. Or why would you just put your money over there and, and let it rest? Each month, take a few hundred bucks and invest it in something so that you remain active. I mean, they, they, they had a bank account over there and they sell it for it, so when the bank went bankrupt, they were all in trouble. The men were crying because of the, of the collapse of that bank, because they had big losses. Now, I didn't want to talk about that bank officially in this video, but I'm using that as, as a reference here. Too often folks settle for things they shouldn't settle for. I talked about economic relevance before, and how and that it's important for you to be economically relevant. And look at this, in the parable of the unjust steward, that's how it's called by the commentaries that um, translate the Bible. In the parable, the Lord, that Christ, recommended the, that unjust steward. Unjust according to the world. Why did Christ recommend someone that committed fraud? Because Christ shows you the bigger picture that men acted wisely. And Christ even said that some that there are times the pagans in this world are far more practical than believers. He said it. That's what he meant with that often the children of this world are wiser in a generation than the children of light. And I've spoken about that before, how practical pagans are um, in general. I've spoken about that often. Christ said that. So I'm, I'm not making it up. For 2019, let that be your goal. To look at the bigger picture, to be economically relevant, and above all, to really pay attention to what Christ said. Because this parable of the unjust steward or the unjust manager is often misused. And interesting what Christ also said in that same uh, part of the scripture. Use the unrighteous mammon to make friends, so that when the unrighteous mammon uh, disappears, people will receive you in eternal tents. What did Christ really say there? Use the unrighteous mammon, so be activated with finances. What for? To make friends, so that you will have an impact on the lives of others. So that when the unrighteous mammon uh, fades away, because that's a temporal thing, people will receive you in, in eternal tense. So use the unrighteous mammon or finances for God's glory, for His purposes. Use it and see it only as a tool to have an impact on the lives of others. You should have an impact on the lives of others. And in this world, finances are important to have an impact on others. You can have an impact without finances, but when you have finances, you can 
things go much, much smoother with finances. That's just practical. Christ in the 90s, like many pagan Christians do, he said, use the unrighteous mammon to make friends. That means to get people on your side, to get people in, in your favor, to get people under your influence. A friend isn't just what people claim so, someone to make you feel good. Okay? Because demons can make you feel good also. Christ really said, be economically relevant. She, she will have an impact on the human community around you so that you will prosper for the kingdom of God on the earth. That's how you operate in the blessing, in the here and now. So being economically relevant is important. You don't do it by your own strength, you do it by the, you do it by the flow of the Holy Spirit, and nevertheless you are active. I'm going to close this video now because I've, sp I've spoken a lot in this video. And let that be uh, your goal for 2019 and the years to come. To be financially prosperous, not for yourself, but because it's a promise from Christ on your behalf to have prosperity. So be financially prosperous so that you, can, so you will reach and have an impact on other people. Don't just look at yourself, you have a job, you go at home, you go home after your job, and at each end of the month you get a compensation through your paycheck. Because that paycheck, man, can disappear anytime. That paycheck is no security. Be active. Be economically relevant. Be at peace.